Here we have a pretty tough u sub because we have e to the 3x, so we have e to the power that's more than just an x, so that's going to require u sub, and then we have plus e to the negative 4x, which is another e to a power that's more than an x, so we're going to have to use a u sub there as well. So it's actually two u sub problems at once. The first thing I would do is I would separate these using that sum and difference rule that we learned earlier. We could just say this is e to the 3x dx plus e to the negative 4x dx. Just to separate the two pieces, um, it's nice that they're both base e though because that's going to make our goal for taking the antiderivative pretty nice. It's We're going to use the basic integral that the antiderivative e to the x is just e to the x plus c. So a nice antiderivative, we just have to get to the point where we're allowed to take that antiderivative. So we're going to do u sub twice. So I'm going to do it first with this piece here. u is going to be the exponent. So u is going to be 3x. The derivative of 3x, du dx is just going to be 3. And then we're going to multiply both sides by dx to get du by itself. And then we're going to go and do our substitution over here. So we really have e to the u since 3 to x is our u. And now we want to see what would give us our perfect du. So I need a 3 and a dx, but all I have left in there is a dx. So I'm missing a 3, so I have one third of my perfect du is one way to say that. Or if I just go ahead and put the 3 in there to see the 3 dx together to call it du, that's fine. But to balance out the 3 that I put on the inside, I'm going to put a one third outside. So I have one third e to the u du for that first piece. Now I'm going to integrate it. I'm going to get one third e to the u, right? The antiderivative e to the x was e to the x plus c. So the antiderivative of e to the u is going to be e to the u plus k. Antiderivative e to the t would be e to the t. So antiderivative e to the u is e to the u. Normally plus a k, but I'll just leave a plus because I'm going to have to do that second part of this u sub and I'll do the constant at the end. Last piece is subbing back in for x's. So this is one third e to the u is really three x. All right, so we did that first u sub. Now we're going to do the second part of the u sub, which is working with this term here. So for this term, u is gonna be the exponent again. So u is gonna be negative four x. The derivative of that du dx is just gonna be negative four. And then we're going to multiply both sides by dx. And now we're ready for that tough substitution step. We have the integral of e raised to the u again, because negative 4x is our u. And then we want to make sure that we have a perfect du. So to have that, we need a negative 4 and a dx. But all I have is a dx. So I have negative 1 fourth of what I need to have my du. Or the other way of visualizing it is putting a negative 4 right in there so that we can see our du all together. But to balance out making it negative 4 times too big, we're going to put a 1 over negative 4 outside. Either way, we get the same thing. Negative 1 fourth e to the u du. So when I go to integrate, I'm going to keep that negative 1 fourth outside. Antiderivative e to the u is e to the u plus k. Looks just like our goal here, the antiderivative e to the x was e to the x plus c, so the antiderivative e to the u was e to the u plus k. And then finally, our final answer, instead of writing plus a negative, I'm just going to write minus 1 fourth e to our u is negative 4x plus c. So a tough one because we had two exponentials in one problem, but typically with an exponential like that, u is going to be the exponent, unless it's within a quotient rule, then u is the denominator. But if it's just an exponential not mixed in with a quotient, u is typically the exponent, and then you just have to figure out, is it an e to the u problem, or was it like the 9 to the u problem that we already saw?